Hey, do you guys remember not too long ago, my She-Hulk had some overheating problems right after a BIOS update? Well, there is a beta BIOS out for it now addressing the idle temperatures, and I'm thinking it's going to address the overall temperatures if I run Cinebench again. So we're gonna do the BIOS update. That means our PL1 and PL2 levels are going to go back to normal. So we're gonna take a look at those and then do another uh, test run as far as the temperatures go. I just wanna see if it changed anything. And I'm going to go off of memory. I'm not really going to look at the previous results, but I think what ended up happening is we ran it for less than a minute or maybe a minute and some seconds and it was into the 90s. I know this is a, a 12900KS, but it was just it was just instant. So anyway, let's get that BIOS updated and see if anything resolved. If not, no big deal. It's it's not a big deal to me. So anyway, stick around. Okay, so I have my BIOS thumb drive right here and we're going to go ahead and plug that into the she-hulk uh, pretty much any port will do and we're going to make sure we have nothing on it okay so that's a good thing and we're going to open up our google chrome here and right now i'm on the website for our motherboard that is and we have i'll show you right here which bios version whoops we do have, we want to show all. So we do have 3802, and I updated from 3701. Now, in order to check your BIOS, what we do is just click in here, and we're going to type in run. And then down here, it's already there. I've done it so many times. It's, yeah, MS Info 32. I almost forgot. So MS Info 32, and we can see right here, 3802 is right now what we're running. So we're gonna go ahead and close that out. We're gonna go ahead and download this one. We can see it's already done. We can go ahead and close that. Go to our downloads folder. And I'm going to get rid of this. It is a zip folder, so we're gonna do a right click and click on extract all. And we're gonna go ahead and extract it right back to here. Now the renamer is only to rename it if you're doing a BIOS flashback. That means without a CPU. Uh, potentially you can really do it with a CPU in it, but if you don't have a CPU or if you're upgrading to a new CPU that your motherboard does not currently support and you need to do a BIOS update. So that would be what you would have to do is you just have to rename this file. But other otherwise, we're just gonna take this, we're gonna do control C or right click and you can copy. And we are going to go down here to, uh, let's see, we want BIOS update, control V. And we're gonna put that right on there. I'm not even gonna remove it from here. And we're going to go ahead and restart this computer and get into the BIOS. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. We can see we have 3802 up top there. We're going to go up here to Tools. We are going to go to Asus Easy Flash 3 Utility. And then we are going to find our, right down here, is our thumb drive. There's that. Do you want to read this file? Yes, we do. Do you really want to update the BIOS? Yes, we do. All right, now we're just going to see a progress bar go across here. It's going to reboot up to a few times, uh, potentially, and then we should get back into the BIOS or into Windows, and we'll go ahead and do our testing. Okay, as I was monkeying around here, the progress bar has started. And I'm just going to skip forward to the end here because this is kind of boring. Okay, so the update was successful. It's rebooting on its own. I did not touch a thing. And again, the computer could reboot up to three, four times. Um, I have had a computer reboot more than that much, but it was a rare occasion. 
Okay, so it only had to reboot once, and now pretty much we have to load the optimized defaults. So we're just going to, I think it's hit F1, and we're gonna get right into the BIOS. And here we go. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to load the optimized defaults, go to your exit, go to the top where it says load optimized defaults, and that's it. We're gonna click OK. And now we're gonna hit F10. And basically that's just to save our stuff and exit. Now it's gonna reboot into Windows. Okay, so we come up with a fan detection error. That's for the CPU. I believe that's because the new BIOS, when you reset everything to factory default or optimized default settings, basically it's looking for a fan. And we don't have a fan, we have a water pump. So what I have to do is go into here and I'm gonna have to kind of fudge through this because I can't remember exactly how to do this, but basically I just have to turn it so it doesn't look for a CPU fan anymore. <laughs> well, that was pretty quick. I just went under monitor and then we have CPU fan and we're just gonna uh, click on it to click ignore. And that should be all that we need to do in here. I'm thinking, so we want F10 again. And basically we're just gonna ignore those settings and hopefully ignore the settings. There we go. And hopefully this next reboot is gonna be perfectly fine. All right, we can see right here, our CPU package is running at about 37 and everything else is running in the 30s, low 40s, uh, just at an idle here. I mean, there are some things that were still running in the background. I can go ahead and reset the maximum minimum and see, hit the 40s here quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is open up Cinebench I just want to see what it'll do with the new update. That's all. This this could be a uh, complete failure, but let's just see what it does. And minimize that. We are going to run advanced. And see, now this was our old score down here in the red. So we should hit better than that if we were able to let it run again. But let's just do, uh, actually I do want advance. So let's do a 10 minute run and multi-core. And here we go. And I may have to stop this. We will see, yeah, look at that. We are in the red already. It's not dangerous yet, but we are at 98, 96, 97. There's 99, and now we have a bunch more. We're already thermal throttling. So we already hit 100C, actually, on a couple of cores. You can see over here all the red. So it's not, it's doing better than it did. Uh, I never push the CPU this hard anyway. So obviously our PL1 and PL2 are back to the normal. Uh, the only other way you can control this is by the undervolting the CPU. So instead of overclocking it, you're underclocking it, if, if you will. So one of the other factors was the idle temperatures. I know they were high in one of my previous videos, and I just stopped the test. And we're down in the 40s and pretty instantly. Um, the fans are still kind of ramped up a little bit here. So I'm trying to see what it's going to do because it really should drop back to an idle temperature. Okay, now we're starting to see, I'm starting to see the 30s. So it did drop pretty good. Um, I think the idle temps have may have been corrected, but as far as controlling it so it doesn't hit 100C or anywhere there close, I don't even like when it gets up to 95. Um, but anyway, that's going to be a short video. So obviously that BIOS update didn't do exactly what I thought it was going to do. Other than maybe the idle temperatures, it did bring them down a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's it. Sorry, guys. But anyway, hit that subscribe button and see you next time.